Today we had a chance to spend time with the Honda Prologue, which to date is I think the most significant entry Honda has ever made into the electric car market, but it is certainly not their first. So let's take a minute to see what Honda's done, what they're doing, and hopefully where they're heading in the future. We're starting here with the Honda Prologue, and what we have going on under the skin is a lot of what you'll find in the Chevrolet Blazer and a bunch of the other Ultium EVs. And for a lot of folks, this is a point of contention because this is a Honda badge vehicle that's not nearly as much Honda as we found historically, but as far as I'm concerned, it's to their benefit because what they've done historically has been sort of one-off and very much on their own. And in a changing landscape, as we have in the electrified and the electric world, it's best to find a partner if you're not ready to dive all the way in. Now, when it comes to split development, it's kind of a tough bag to juggle. And I think what we find is that they take the best of General Motors, which is under the skin here, and then they add on top of what Honda knows best. So as far as comparisons, it's short and sweet, but I think this is a lot better looking than the Blazer. We also get a couple features that you don't find in the Blazer like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that's certainly gonna help this age a little bit better. And for Honda owners, how their vehicle age is really important because they're probably gonna keep them for quite a while. For the moment though, enough about the prologue because this is where they're at at the moment. But as I mentioned, Honda has done a lot of sampling and testing in the electrified world for quite a while. You see, they started out with the Honda Insight, and that was the two-door, two-seat, hyper-mile, manual transmission hybrid vehicle. And at some point, depending on who you ask, that would get up to 60 miles per gallon on the freeway, which is an incredible feat, but it was not the biggest hit. You see, there's still a cult following, and Honda owners know about their insights, but not everyone else does. So when Toyota came along and had the Prius, Honda said, hey, we have a vehicle, we have an Insight, and so they kind of revamped that Insight, but they went a different direction. You see, they said, we're gonna hybridize this vehicle, but we're gonna still make it drive more like a car. And what they did is they sacrificed some efficiency for some of that on-road feel. And honestly, I think that was a good move, but because the Prius was the king of the mile per gallon, it took a, a much bigger step forward than what we found for Honda. It wasn't too many years later, we saw that Insight go away, and really the next step forward was a very unusual combination. It was a manual transmission again, like we found in the Insight. It was two seats and they called it the CRZ, the hybrid sports car. Now that CRZ is one that I still am a fan of, but most people wanted something either sportier or more efficient. And again, Honda found themselves in sort of this middle ground where some people might be interested, but there were higher numbers either on performance or fuel efficiency. So we saw the CRZ go away, then we see the Hybrid Accord and the plug-in Hybrid Accord, which I think is the closest to the modern Honda electrification strategy, which is to take a known product and really lean into the benefits of electrification. Again, what we didn't see is huge numbers on the plug-in hybrid. They were mostly sold down in California, and for those who have them, they enjoy them, but there seem to be better options. The most recent efforts from Honda prior to what we see here in the prologue was the Clarity. And the Clarity came in three different powertrains. That was the plug-in hybrid, the all-electric, and the fuel cell variant, which for a mid-sized sedan was a lot to happen in a single vehicle. And it's what Honda, I think, has done best, which is really try something new. But what we saw is that there was a widespread and a lot of variation between the two. The plug-in hybrid, I think, did the best of all of them as the fuel cell vehicle was really mostly sold down in California. Again, was always gonna limit sales, especially because of the availability of refueling. But the electric model was around 85 miles on a full charge. And that was already less competitive than some of the other markets. Really, at that point, you were shopping a Nissan Leaf, which could have a bigger battery, or the clarity on the shorter range thing. Moving forward, Honda said, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna change things up a bit. We did get some hybrids. We currently have a CRV hybrid, we have an Accord hybrid, and coming soon, we have the Civic hybrid. But to jump all the way in to a full electric vehicle takes a lot of time, and the Honda way to do it is, is going to be unique. That takes us right back to the prologue, at least for the moment, because this Honda badge means that they believe this vehicle is Honda enough 
to put their name on. And especially here in the United States, there haven't been a whole lot of Honda collaborations. So when they say this is enough, I want to take their word for it, but it's also worth trying out. And as you'll see on our Auto Buyer's Guide video, we, we think this is worthwhile and certainly competitor to some of the other markets, especially something like the Toyota BZ4X. But if Honda said we we're going to build this from scratch, it might be years and years until we got this product on the market. And that's not good for Honda sales. That's not good for Honda customers who want their electric car right now. And it's not going to help them keep up because they're going to fall farther and farther behind if they don't have an offering. So moving forward, this is pardon the pun, but this is the prologue. This is the beginning of the rest of this story because the shift has been made. And while Honda has attempted it previously in their own fashion, the world is shifting towards electric and Honda wants to make sure that they do it their way. What we will see in the next couple years are hopefully some exciting entrants into the electrified world, some plug-in hybrids, maybe more in the alternative fuel area of fuel cells. And the most recent tease that we got a glimpse of at the LA Auto Show was the Honda Prelude, which was a hybridized version of a since retired nameplate that we hope to see here either on our shores or at least globally within the next couple years. Right down here is the Honda that we know and love. This is the badge, this is the name. But right above it, we see steps towards the future. We see a new branding in the logo. We see a new e-badge that you'll find on a lot of their electric or electrified models moving forward. And these changes are not ones that they take lightly and neither do I. Having owned a couple Hondas in my life and enjoyed the ones that I have, I have high expectations of this brand when it comes to making a compelling, exciting, long-lasting, and worthwhile vehicle. So when they're willing to make this many changes, which is not something that they're known to do, I want to root for them, but in the next few years, we'll really see if they've done enough to stay competitive, to give their customers what they're looking for, and if the waiting in the wings and the partnering in the meantime has really paid off. It's not just Honda making these changes, but in the next few years, we'll see what other manufacturers have to offer when it comes to a new compelling electrified product. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns, please leave those down in the comment section below. We'll hope to see you in the next one.